Back in the shop again today, I've got to get this two and three eighths used oil pipe and get it all cut out to the right length and welded together into a six rail gate that is gonna weigh, I don't know, three, four, 5,000 pounds. It's gonna be really heavy, not that heavy, but it's gonna be kind of tough to deal with. I'd like to get the hinges made and before this video is over, my goal is to have that thing hung up and functional. That's what we're doing today on Farmer Tyler Ranch. up these cutting guides and these are going to enable me to cut a nice notch in this pipe so that it all fits up together and welds together really nice. I will show you how these notchers work and I'll show you how I get everything aligned because I think that's the hardest part is just making sure that your notches are both clocked the same on the pipe so that when you fit it up in that square everything fits. Now you see how all those little shavings are sticking to the end of this pipe. This stuff is, is fairly magnetized, so I'm hoping that we can kind of get that out of it by the time we actually come to start welding. So the first thing that I do on my little welding table that's entirely too small for this job is I've got a piece of electrical conduit strut. And I'm basically just, you could use C-channel or it's really anything to just hold the pipe so that it doesn't roll around because I kind of need it to stay in the same spot for the next step here. Next thing, I'm gonna take another piece of electrical conduit strut, uh, but honestly, if I had my choice, I would use a small piece of angle iron or a small piece of channel iron to do this, but as it is right now, I don't have anything that size that's long enough to accomplish what I need to do, uh, but I do have this strut and it seems to work, so that's why we're doing it that way. So I've got my pipe in a strut sandwich now and, and I think you can see how channel iron or some small angle iron would work a lot better than this or just, I mean, I guess they work the same, but the angle iron would be a lot easier to work with. All we're trying to do here is establish a straight line down the length of this pipe so that when I'm cutting the notches out, I know that they're both clocked the same in relation to one another. I actually didn't think of how to do this, I kind of stole this idea from a guy named Brian that has a YouTube channel called Luthy Ranch. He's up in Wyoming and he makes a lot of stuff out of oil pipe and this was one of his tips. He had a one inch piece of angle iron that looked like it worked a lot better than this conduit strut, but this gets it done too. So now I've got a good reference mark on either side of the pipe and I know that I'll have my, my notches aligned correctly. Some people are probably thinking, well, why don't you just eyeball it? I mean, you get close enough, right? Just put a mark on the very top here, mark on the top down there and you'll be good, right? Well, maybe, but I found that even if you're off by just a few degrees, this pipe won't fit up into the gate frame very well and you just end up having more problems in the end. So taking a little bit of extra time to make sure that these are aligned properly now is just kind of making my life easier in the future. I get this marked out with a mark all silver streak uh, welder's pencil. And the reason that I use that is because for me, it's the easiest to see and the, the heat from the arc from the plasma cutter won't like melt that line away. So as you're cutting, it doesn't disappear on you, which, which is nice. So this is probably the hardest part is just following this line, cutting this out. 
I'm sure some guys can do this without a lot of grinder work, but I've, I've tried one of these before filming and I needed a grinder to really get things to look good. Been a couple of days now I've had enough time to get all my pieces cut out and I'm starting to get everything fit up this is the hardest part because I've got you know my, my floor in the shop here is not level so I have to set up my stands and then level everything out before I start tacking stuff together because the pipes on this gate are gonna end up being so close together I cannot build the rectangle or the outer frame of the gate first and then add the pipes later which would be a lot easier um, what I'm gonna have to do instead is weld together this sort of like horseshoe shape or think of it as a rectangle that's missing one side and once I'm pretty sure that I've got everything squared up uh, I won't finish welding anything until like everything's together but once I feel pretty confident with the corners of the gate, then I can start adding these pieces lengthwise and really hope that all of my measurements and cutting turned out right because uh, it, it'll tell the story when we put this final piece on the end and we might have to do some grinding, some cutting to make it all work, but that's the plan. Little tip, when you're tacking corners, it's important to do one tack on either side of the corner. Even though I've got this in a 90 degree clamp, if I was to only tack like what I call the armpit of the joint, then when I take that clamp off, the metal is gonna move a little bit because every time you weld something, the metal shrinks just a little bit. If you don't counteract that by tacking the other side, then when you remove your clamp, what you thought was a true 90 degree angle is no longer. Okay, so inside to inside is 47 and a quarter. Alright, so inside to inside on this end is 47 flat. So somewhere we, uh, we lost a quarter of an inch, but that's why we check all these things. It's really easy for me to just spread these apart a little bit and then clamp them. I feel pretty confident in my corners now. Everything is square and level. So I'm gonna go ahead and tack the rest of this horizontal pipe in the gate and then we can put this end piece on, see where we're at. problem piece is this one right here. We'll have to hit that with the grinder. Well, that's a lot better there. Well, everything checks out here. The spacing on the pipes is good. 
the angles are all square so i'm really happy with this i think it looks good it looks way heavier than it needs to be maybe when there's a 2000 plus pound bull standing behind it it won't look so big let's go ahead and weld this up got this thing all welded up uh, it's the welding itself wasn't hard but getting it to flip over was and I'm very curious how much this thing weighs I tried to handle it a little bit when it was on the ground and it it's heavy 278 pounds I even put the kilograms up there for you guys that you know aren't from around here First attempt at the latch didn't go great. I've made a couple of changes now. I've got a longer linkage piece and then I shortened the tab that's on the handle so that that point in the linkage doesn't move up and down quite as much when you're working the handle. So we'll put it back together again and try it and see if I've improved anything. Well, that looks a lot better. Let's go ahead and make this permanent. Dare I say, this thing is done, finally. Um, I still need to make a hinge to put on the post so that I can attach it. I'm not gonna film that because for one, I have filmed making the hinge in other videos, and for two, if you're trying to copy this design, you'll get all the information you need just by looking at it. You really don't need to see me build it.
lost filming somewhere. I'm not sure the camera overheated and it really is hot out here. I'm not sure if it will show in the footage, but if it does, you will have seen me do an uphill Z weave on these hinges. The reason being strength is important here. This gate's very heavy and we could potentially have a big mad bull pushing on this gate. A Z weave is a little bit more difficult than just going downhill, but the Z weave, because you're going uphill, gives you a lot better penetration and it's a much stronger weld. You can see the way the slag deposits on the weld, it looks weird. Um, but I think we'll go ahead and chip this off. Obviously, I don't know what it looks like yet. It might look terrible. But let's check it out. Man, if I can get it off. Well, I left the chipping hammer at home and I can't really get it too well just with the Leatherman. But it actually looks pretty good. I'm, I'm pleased with that. That's, that's acceptable. So now the moment of truth, we're gonna take it off of the hoist and off of the blocks and see if it stays on there. So we're all on the hoist now. Well, I tell you, you can really feel the weight of that gate when you're moving it. And I don't know if that's good or bad. This is one of the last critical steps to this bullpen. I think really all that's left that needs to happen in here is I need to get the boards up along the inside of the wall, uh, fill in a couple of those windows. And once all that's done, I think this is through. Obviously the other big glaring thing that needs to happen down here is I need to get the pipe welded up in this fence line. I think I'm going to get that tomorrow. So I'm hoping by the end of the week, this is done. And then this whole project will finally be finished. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys. And I hope I'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch.